Hi, Larry here. What we're going to do today is I need to make a plate that covers this enclosure to mount a few switches. So we're going to go through just a quick project on how to make this. First, I don't have any dimensions for this box, so I need to measure it. And it measures 4.033 in length. and 2.912 and so we need to record that in our CAD. Now the tricky part is I don't have any drawings or anything on this so we need to find the distance center to center on these holes. Now this is would be easier if I was doing it just right in front of me but measuring from edge to edge is the same as measuring center to center and more accurate. So that is the measurement I'm going to use on one dimension. And this is going to be how I establish the other dimension. So we're going to use those dimensions when we draw this up in CAD. So the other thing is the switches that we want to mount. Uh, and again, I don't have the drawings for uh, any of these switches. So a couple things I need to know is, number one, the hole that I want to uh, put uh, into the panel. And this happens doing it upside down here. So uh, you're just going to have to look at it upside down. It's 0.462. Uh, and uh, so if we use that dimension to cut in our panel, the hole is probably going to be a little bit too small. I'm going to increase that by about uh, ten thousandths of an inch to make sure that I don't have to file this hole out at all. Then the other thing we need to measure, I'm just going to measure the, the width and the height of the things that are on the inside so I can establish where I need to put these on the plate itself. So the, the other thing, the other switch that I want to mount is this little square switch and again this is an Elko switch I could possibly find the drawing someplace for a cutout but I haven't gotten that so I'm just going to measure the part that's going to go through the panel I've measured 0.473 on the width I'm going to add about ten thousandths to that just to make a nice uh, free cutout now the tricky part is this has got these little springs that, number one, we can't make the hole any bigger than 0.664. That's the amount that the springs spread out. But obviously, the, we have to make it small enough so the springs will capture this, put it in place. Now, the minimum size looks about 610. I'm going to take a shot at about 5 eighths of an inch, 0.625. So now we're going to switch over to the um, screen and go from there. Alrighty, here we have what I've drawn up. I've drawn up all of the outside dimensions on the plate. I've drawn it up as a rectangle, putting in the rounding for the corners, and I just guesstimated what those corners are going to be. We'll see what's, how it uh, winds up in the final and uh, the uh, mounting holes what I took is those dimensions and I have some center marks here and I just offset those dimensions uh, using the dimension divided by two to come up with the locations for these screw holes I measured the width of the uh, box and put those uh, in now you see it's a really wide space dashed line. QCAD has a command they call screen based line types. I don't know that I totally understand it, but it gives you a little bit better presentation when you press that. I believe it scales the uh, dashes to match your screen size. The other thing is I uh, drew in the bezel. Now these are the outside dimensions of our switch so we know how close we can get it to the edge and 
we have the cutout of the square switch up here. So uh, with that in mind, let's just save it. I saved it as stomp switch top DXF. Save it. Now we do alternate tab over to Avcam. There it is. Now settings. We set the layers to and outside. Remember outside is the everything that's going to be on the perimeter. And layer two, it could be called inside, but it's not named outside. And that's going to cut on the inside. So we set that. This just tells us that we've got multiple layers selected. If there's just one layer, it would tell us the name of that layer. On our title bar, we've got all of the layers named. This is from a previous video. So we'll ignore that. And um, let's look uh, at our settings. We're going to use an eighth inch end mill. We're going to be using uh, 1 16th of an inch material, 24 inches a minute is fine. Spindle delay, no changes. Cut depth minus 0.125. Probably wouldn't need to be quite that deep, but that's fine too. Let's just call that okay. Let's simulate it. And also note that we're using the finish cut. It causes two passes to go around the inside cuts gives better accuracy and uh, better cutting finish. So with that in mind, we're already hooked up to the panel pro. Let's uh, just pause here and we'll take a look and see once uh, what we need to do on the panel pro side to set things up. Okay, we've got the CAD portion of our work done on this plate and it's not taking very long at all and uh, now what we need to do is set this up so we can cut this on the panel pro notice that i have the origin or work zero at the lower left hand corner of this plate we need to match that up on the panel pro and tell the panel pro where this point is going to be when we first start up the panel pro it goes through a homing procedure on the 5925 models or if you use uh, uh, the work zero setting on your 4824 or 5624 you'll manually set that home position and your work zero is uh, a the portion where you want to tell it to start measuring from and that is different from home and uh, typically is going to be in the lower left hand corner of your work it's just a makes it a convenient place to measure from it could just as easily be in the middle of this plate um, and uh, but in this case we've got it right at the lower left hand corner so now what we've got is the panel pro set up and um, ready to cut it's been homed already and uh, remember our um, measurements from before and if you don't measure them you can actually do that on the uh, avcam itself so if i just take my mouse note on the status bar on the bottom there is a mouse position and so if i put it over here it says that uh, it's about four inches in width and about three inches in height so if I go over and look at my uh, material, notice that I've got this particular one between the bars, and I've got about five inches between the bars. That means that I can cut this entire plate without having to have some sacrificial material on top of my bars. As you can see that I've on my bars, I've cut through them on numerous times, and that was deliberate and... Uh, it's a discussion for another day. But anyhow, we, we have to cut four inches by three inches. And the lower left-hand corner is going to be somewhere right around here. Uh, I can just mark that with a Sharpie or something like that. In fact, let's just do that. I just mark that with a Sharpie. 
and uh, so we can easily go to that point and call it work zero. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is set up our Z zero and uh, so we're going to jog this around as soon as I turn the axis on. Okay, now we can jog left and right using a numeric keypad. And I'm going to use the three key to lower it down. And I'm going to eyeball this. This is not a real precise measurement. Now I'm switching over to the mouse wheel to do fine measurements so I don't crash it into the material. And using just the eyeball to watch for light underneath the uh, end mill, I can estimate where the top of the material is. I can hit Z once to bring up the uh, Z control dialog. <coughs> and Z a second time to reset work zero and hit OK. The other things we can watch for is the retract level. Now the area that we've set as our work Z zero, this retract level, when we're moving from place to place, will go to this uh, three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch will clear the clamps that we have supplied. And if you've got any kind of other obstructions in the way, you'll probably want to set that at a different level. Go slow height. Um, anytime the Z axis is below that height, it will move at a slow rate rather than a rapid rate. So let me just exit out of this and notice the we are now at Z0. I'm going to raise that up oh, by 60 thousandths here. Now if I jog, it just moves at a slow rate, which makes it a lot more controllable as we're close to the surface. Now I'm just eyeballing it again uh, by our Sharpie. Now you need to make sure that you've got adequate material all the way around this to support the cut. Uh, in terms of the end mill that I'm using, I'm using a single flute end mill and uh, that works much better for the 5052 soft aluminum that I'm cutting today. If you're cutting 2024, you may want to use uh, a two flute end mill, the single flute end mill works fine on that as well. So at that point, I'm going to hit the R key which sets both X and Y axis to zero. And now if you look at the status bar, it shows X and Y are zero and Z is still set at 0 0.06. Since we have already set the Z zero, I can hit the zero key on the numeric keypad and it moves it down to the zero that we've set. You want to take a little bit of caution using that key. No, you have to make sure that you've got that Z set, set because if you hit the zero key uh, and you've got the Z zero set below what your current surface is, you could crash it and uh, possibly damage your material or an end mill. I'm going to hit the seven key and now the seven key uh, brings it up to uh, our retract level. So we've got our work zero set. We've got uh, Z zero set. Now let's just use another command to see if we have uh, our layout set out properly. And I'm going to use the move to mouse position. And so what this does, you see it turns red and now I'm going to move to the corner here and I can observe that uh, we still have uh, bare metal in between. We should not be cutting through the uh, bars. Now the AVCAM and the Panel Pro does not have to start at zero, but if you're not at zero, you will get a message telling you that you're not at work zero just as a reminder uh, 
did you really set your work zero to match your file? So let's just leave it up here in the upper right hand corner at the moment and we'll see once what happens. Right now I'm going to put on my headphones and my uh, and we're going to put the splash guard in place. We're going to check to see if we have enough coolant that covers the uh, uh, coolant pump and uh, we'll go ahead and cut this. Okay, we've got our splash guard in place and uh, so all now all we have to do now is either open up the cut dialog and hit cut file. Now I've reloaded this file since uh, a bit ago so it's showing red and red would mean uh, that it needs to be simulated first. So let's hit simulate and our estimated cut time says it should take us about 1.1 minutes to cut this out. So let's go ahead and cut this. There's couple different ways we can go about this. We can either hit this, the cut dialog and click cut the file or we can use the keyboard shortcut and those are found, found in the help file. Hit C and it brings up the cut dialog and with the cut dialog open we can hit C again and now this is our uh, message that says we're not starting at zero zero. We know that we've set 00, zero so we're going to just tell it it's okay. We've cut the file now, it's uh, dropped out, and uh, notice that the actual cut time is actually 1.1 minute. Uh, for normal cutting, that estimated time is usually pretty accurate. For things like uh, lasering or engraving, uh, the cut time is not terribly accurate. We need to do some more work on that. All right, so in 1.1 minutes, we have uh, gone ahead and cut this file that we cut out. A couple things to notice. Number one, you're all when you cut it off, it is always going to have this cutoff nib. Uh, you're going to have to take care of that with a deburring wheel or a file, something like that. The other thing to notice, we use the rough cut and finish cut on these inside cutouts. I don't know if you can see it on the on the video, but the the cut quality is way better on this inside cut than the, than the outside. On the outside, you can see it's just look, looks a little bit rough. That's what a single cut looks like. So let's see once how our fit works out. So we've got fits like a glove, just just perfectly. So the other one is this square switch and we just measured that out and uh, width wise it's just perfectly, it's just a little bit on the tight side for these uh, springs and we could have benefited from um, a uh, possibly a manufacturer's cutout drawing on this. The other thing is, is that we used a 1 8 inch end mill so the corner radius is going to be no less than what your end mill is. So you could consider using either a smaller end mill or if you need to get in there in the corners and square that out you could use a little bit of a, uh, a file or something like that and square out those corners. The other thing is how does it fit on the enclosure itself? Well, outside dimensions looks like just pretty much perfect. So the other thing is, is how about our mounting holes? And this is a little bit subject to the quality of your measurements, obviously. These are not the screws I'm going to use, but just to show that it fits just perfectly. So 
this is not a, a full-blown project like you'd make a panel on an aircraft but it's the same process same procedure and the same quality of results thank you for watching